guys, my name is Katie and this video is ideal for anyone who is preparing for their GCSEs. Now this video is going to focus on some of the best ways that I think you should revise for your GCSE examinations. Okay, so before I move on, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be kept up to date with a whole range of other career, education and testing videos. Okay, so the dreaded time. Now at the end of May, students across the country complete their GCSE examinations. Now these examinations are hugely important and therefore the process of both studying for and taking the test can be extremely stressful. Now as a parent, you might be wondering about the best way to help your child succeed. And as a student, you might be juggling your exams with a range of other issues. Now the impact of these exams can affect the rest of your life so therefore it's really important you do the best that you can. So with this in mind I've prepared a complete guide to help you prepare for your GCSEs and how to manage your study leave. Okay so tip number one is managing your study leave. Okay so your study leave will depend upon the school that you attend Study leave is a set period of time where you will be required to continue your learning by yourself to prepare for your exams and this is usually done at home. Okay, so study leave is really important and you need to make maximum use of your study leave in order to enhance your exam results. Now, some schools do not offer study leave so it will depend on what school you are going to. So just make sure you find out whether or not you do get study leave, okay? So... For those of you that do get study leave, you will need to divide up your time so that during your study leave you spend a sufficient amount of time revising each subject. Okay, so the best way to manage your time in conjunction with study leave is to create a timetable which lists all your exam dates, revision classes and individual learning for specific subjects. Okay, so I've provided you with a very basic timetable that you can quite easily make yourself in order to monitor your revision progress leading up to your all important exams. Okay, so I suggest that you fill in your timetable week by week and update it when you have taken an exam so that way you can take out that exam from your timetable and replace it with new revision subjects that you need to focus on. Okay, so tip number one, let's carry on from managing your study leave. Okay, so in, re in regards to your revision timetable, so you, you should consider the following. So plan your revision early. So by the time you actually receive your study leave, you should have started revising anyway. Therefore, study leave should ideally be used as a means of brushing up on information that you've already learned, rather than actually learning new information at that time, okay? Because you are leaving it quite late in the game. Okay, so you need to make sure that you have planned ahead of schedule to ensure that you can go back over each and every single one of your subjects. And if you are taking a wide range of GCSEs, then you will need more time to do this, okay? So that's why it's important to start revising before you get your study leave. Okay, so secondly, order your subjects. So when you create your revision plan, make sure you order your subjects strategically. So remember that the skills involved in some subjects tie in or link with other subjects, okay? So for example, English and history both incorporate essay writing skills, okay? So lay layering your subjects in a way that each revision session will help you with the next will greatly aid you when it comes to the exams. Okay, another thing to remember is don't divide your time equally, okay? So one of the biggest mistakes that people make when it comes to creating revision plans is to divide all the subjects equally. So this is unnecessary and it won't help you in any way, okay? So you need to divide your time according to your strengths and your weaknesses, okay? So you should really spend a lot of time on your weaker areas before you move on to your more stronger areas in that subject, Okay, so next we have colour coding. So this is a great and fun way to improve your revision schedule. So if you colour code each subject accordingly to the importance, you can be sure that the, you'll stay organised. So this can even work as a memory enhancing tool. So this is a great way for you to keep organised and monitor your revision techniques. Okay, so let's move on. So here we have tip two is practicing, okay? So obviously, you cannot go into an exam feeling unprepared and unsure about what you're doing. It's important that everything you've learned in the classroom is revised in the, in the lead up to your exam. So I cannot stress to you enough how important it is to practice for your GCSEs. 
So practicing for your GCSEs will improve your learning and ultimately increase your scores, therefore allowing you to increase your chances of scoring a higher grade. Okay, so the best way to practice for your exam is to have a go at different past papers. So most subjects will have lots of past papers online which you can access and this will give you some indication as to the common types of questions that will appear in your, I'm sorry, that's, that should say in your exam and not interview. But by practicing past papers, you will become familiar with exam formats, question styles and time restrictions, all of which will greatly improve your performance in the whole exam, okay? So by becoming familiar with the aforementioned, you would generate better results in the actual exam by understanding the different format and layout of the exam, as well as having already practiced using the same time conditions and exam structure. Okay, so this will really help you to improve your GCSE performance. Okay, so here we have tip three is collaborate. So a great way to learn and improve your knowledge is through your classmates. You and your classmates have sat through the same classes and have been taught the same information. Okay, so therefore you can pick at each other's brains, help one another through their, your revision, and you can learn a lot from one another. So it's a great way to enhance your knowledge. Okay, so you can share your notes, voice your opinions, have debates, show each other how you've worked out the answers. This is an extremely efficient and productive way of revising. So by revising together, you will be able to reduce the amount of workload and stress that you may be feeling before your exam. Okay, so not only does this help with your learning, but it also keeps you interactive and communicating, which will undoubtedly make revision that little bit more interesting, because let's be honest, revising is not exactly fun. Okay, so try and make it as, as fun as possible. So get help from your friends and work together so you're not so bored. Okay, so like I said, reduce the amount of workload and stress that you have by working with others. Okay, so tip four is study breaks. So make sure that you are having regular study breaks during your revision. So if you try to revise too much in one go, there is no doubt that you'll begin to feel tired and stressed. And this will stop you from performing to the best that you can, okay? So by taking regular study breaks and exercising, it proves to be a real asset when it comes to exam revision, okay? So exercising allows you to regenerate and boost your brain's ability to become more productive. Okay, so remember, forcing yourself to revise for hours is not productive and it will affect your overall performance. So I advise that you revise for about an hour and then take about a 15 to half an hour break. This is far more efficient way of revising than doing hours and hours of revising. Okay, tip five is hiring a tutor. So if you are really struggling with a particular subject and you are fortunate enough, then you could invest in a tutor. So tutors are experienced in specific subjects and therefore would be able to tailor your revision more specifically to your weaker areas. They are also great if you are someone who struggles to revise on their own. Not only will you gain company during revision, but that company will play a vital role in improving your knowledge and helping you to achieve higher marks. So although hiring a tutor can be really pricey, it can be extremely worthwhile. So it is something that you should consider if you are really struggling with a subject and you really need to pass it. Okay, so things to consider when hiring a tutor include experience, price, teaching style, background checks. All of this you should sit down with your parents and research into local tutors near you. Ask your teachers, they might know someone that they could recommend to you. So it's a great way for your child to improve their knowledge by having a little bit of extra help outside the classroom. Okay, tip six is revision apps. So there are many student apps that you can download in order to enhance and improve your revision and some of these are free. Uh, these apps will allow you to improve your learning and stay interactive. I've provided you with a few examples of student apps that are designed to better your revision and learning. Research into these apps because there are loads of different apps that can help you in so many different ways. So from improving your nutrition to setting alarms so you actually get up and revise to scientific calculators, organisation apps. One of these I'm, I'm sure will really help you when it comes to revising for your GCSE. So here I've listed a couple of apps that you could look into. So 
I know you, I know how much time you probably already spend on your phone or your iPad, okay, so why not download one of these apps and see what it's all about, okay, so make the most of your mobile or your laptop or iPad, okay, so that's a simple and quick tip. Tip number seven is workshops. Okay, so another fantastic way to use your study leave is to attend or even start up some workshops. So workshops are a great learning tool where students are able to learn similar material, gather together to help each other revise. So these could include learning games. So one of the best things about workshops is that they encourage learning in a more interactive environment. So studies that have shown, provided that they are conducted sensibly, that these activities are hugely beneficial for students' memory Okay, so by making the revision topics more interesting, you are all more likely to engage and learn from that subject. Another thing is time management. So this applies to, especially if you're running a workshop. It's crucial to have good time management when, it, when in charge of those activities as you will need to organise each exercise efficiently and make sure everyone stays on track. We have peer-to-peer -peer interaction, so revision does not have to be depressing and dull. You can make it more fun and more interactive. So remember that all of your peers are in the same position as you are. Together you can make revision fun and come up with different ways and different str like strategic methods of how you all can benefit from revising in a specific, specific way. Okay, so let's move on to some golden nuggets. So, some real golden nuggets for preparing for your GCSEs, okay? So, let's recap. I have provided you with all of the key things, and I have given you a load of information that you might have forgot already, but you can scroll back in the video and take some notes as you go. So, I think when it comes to revising, you should focus on all of the key things that I've mentioned before, and also some of the things I'm going to mention to you now, okay? So number one is eat healthy. So this is really important. So while you're studying, your body is using up energy. And in order to ensure maximum results and focus on your work, you need to make sure you maintain a healthy diet. Okay, so your brain will work much better when kept healthy and nutritious. Okay, a useful tip. This is one we've already gone through. So take breaks. I have mentioned that Revising for hours and hours isn't going to benefit you, so it's better if you revise for about an hour and then take a about a half an hour study break. So this will break up your revision and it will keep you fully regenerated for your revision techniques. Remove distractions. Now this is a great one. So during your study time, it's really important that you remove all non-study gadgets such as TVs, iPads, your phone. We all know how easy it is to become distracted and you should eliminate these in order to improve your performance when, when revising. Okay, so next we have exercise. Like I said, exercise is a proven and fantastic way to keep yourself both mentally and physically fit for the upcoming exams. Keeps your body relaxed and invites oxygen to your brain, which in turn will help you to focus better. Okay, so that's a crucial tip that you should really pay attention to, okay? Next, we have practice papers. I have mentioned this before, and this is a key thing. The best way to revise, like I said, is to practice, and this gives you an idea of how the paper itself will be structured. It will help you to practice working under timed conditions, and it will make you feel more confident. Okay, so no revision plan is complete without sufficient use of practice papers. Okay, practice does make perfect, so make sure that you do use practice papers, they are available to you online. Most of them are free and they're easy to find, okay? So there's no reason for you not to do this. Next, we have equip yourself. So this is a very basic organisational tip, but one that could come in useful. Okay, so prior to your study leave, stock up on all the basics you'll need. Notepads, pens, stickers, whatever you'll be using to help you revise. You don't want to forgo an important revision method simply because you run out of resources. Okay, so prepare yourself beforehand and you will have all the materials needed for success, which is what the exams are all about. You want to succeed, okay? Next, we have stay calm, okay? So reduce the amount of stress you are feeling. So try to ensure your home environment is as calm and relaxed as possible, especially if this is where you plan on doing the bulk of your revision. So calm, 
relaxed atmosphere whilst you are revising. Start immediately. Don't make the mistake of putting off your study leave simply because you have free time. So this time is really, really valuable. You need to make full use of it. The earlier you start, the better prepared you will feel for the exam. So this is where a detailed and structured revision plan will be the most useful. So if you flick back through to the beginning of my video, I have given you a revision timetable that you can use in order to monitor your timing and your efficiency in regards to your revision techniques, okay? Prepare the night before, okay? So on the night before the exam, make sure that you are completely organised. There's nothing worse than rushing around on the morning of the exam because you don't know where the location is or you don't have the right equipment or forgotten something. So get things ready, okay? So that you can get a good night's sleep, have a healthy bre breakfast and be ready to tackle the exam without any worries about that you don't have the right equipment with you or you're running late. So make sure you are prepared. Lastly, but not least, is believe in yourself, okay? So remember that no exam can be deter can um, determine your entire future. But if you believe in yourself and perform to the absolute best of your ability, then you can always be proud of what you have accomplished, okay? So as long as you've really tried your best, then obviously there's nothing more you can do. But if you believe in yourself, you're going to be that one step closer to actually achieving su successful marks, okay? So that's it for my GCSE preparation. I hope you have found something useful in this video that will help to improve your revision when it comes to your exams. Please remember to like this video. Drop me a message if you have any questions or comments. Please, sub sub uh, please subscribe to the channel for free and it will keep you up to date with more of my upcoming videos. Take care. Thank you for watching and good luck with your GCSEs.